এই লাইভ ওয়েবিনারের কিনোট স্পিকার ডক্টর মোহাম্মদ বাবুল আলম অ্যাসোসিয়েট প্রফেসর ন্যাশনাল ইনস্টিটিউট অফ কিডনি ডিজিজ আমাদের আরেকটি সায়েন্টিফিক প্রেজেন্টেশন আছে যার প্রেজেন্টার হলেন ডক্টর এস এম ইমতিয়াজুর রহমান ম্যানেজার মেডিকেল অ্যাফেয়ার্স অ্যান্ড ট্রেনিং নাপানা ফার্মাসিউটিক্যালস লিমিটেড আমি আর সময় নষ্ট করছি না আমি আমাদের শ্রদ্ধেয় স্যার আজকে লাইভ ওয়েবিনারের চেয়ারম্যান প্রফেসর ডক্টর হারুনুর রশিদ স্যারকে অনুরোধ করছি আমাদের মূল প্রোগ্রাম শুরু করে দেওয়ার জন্য I like to thank the Raj TV and Navana Pharmaceutical Company to arrange this virtual seminar on a very important subject, chronic kidney disease, one of the part of the chronic kidney disease and the most important part is CKD and MBD. That means chronic kidney disease and mineral and bone disease. Yeah, we have already participated in this program and all the name has been clearly declared with panel of expert and also the keynote speaker. There are two keynote speakers over here, Dr. Baburul Alam, Assistant Professor of Nephrology, National Institute of Kidney Disease, Urology, will speak about the chronic kidney disease and bone mineral disease. And after him, the another speaker is Dr. Imtiaz Ahmed, who will speak about the new treatment modalities of chronic kidney disease in patient with mineral and bone disease affection. Now I'd like to uh, request Dr. Babrul Alam to have his keynote speech on bone mineral density or bone mineral disease in this uh, important seminar. Babrul Alam, please. Thank you, sir. Honorable chairperson, who kotha shona jatche? Ji. Honorable chairperson, who needs no introductions, legendary nephrologist, not only in Southeast Asia, but also in whole world. Founder, President, Kidney Foundation, former director, uh, National Institute of Kidney Disease and Urology, and uh, founder, president of SOT, council member of ISN, Professor Harun Rashid Sir, and co-chairman, the honorable uh, director of NIGDU, eminent uh, urologist, former Secretary General of Bangladesh Society of uh, Urological Surgeons, Professor Dr. Nurul Huda Lelin Sir, and panel of experts, my mentor, renowned nephrologist, Professor Dr. Muhammad Ayub Ali Chaudhary Sir, my elder brother, another promising nephrologist, Dr. Kaji Shahnur Alam, and uh, Dr. Mariam Mubashira, my dear colleagues, uh, my dear colleague, assistant professor of nephrology, and my uh, students and all my colleagues and uh, all my uh, dear viewers of RAS TV from uh, here and abroad. Uh, now, uh, you know, the, we are facing a great time uh, uh, due to COVID situation. Uh, now, uh, we, uh, we have given a lot uh, of importance to COVID as deserved, but it, in this process neglected the non-COVID diseases. I am very much glad to see all of my teachers without masks. Sir, we, uh, we are happy to see all, all of our teacher. Uh, thank you, sir. Now I am going to my uh, presentation. Uh, Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, 
my topic is chronic kidney disease, uh, medullal bone disorder. Uh, we know the adapt. It is uh, the stages of chronic kidney diseases, uh, which is adapted from the National Kidney Foundation uh, and Kedukri Clinical Practice Guideline for the chronic kidney disease evaluation, classification, and stratification. And uh, what is uh, CKD MBD? CKD, uh, chronic kidney disease, uh, mineral and bone uh, disorder is a common complication of chronic kidney disease and is a part of uh, broader. Now, according to KDGO, uh, it, it is defined as a systemic disorder of mineral and bone metabolism due to CKD manifested either by one or combination of the following. That is uh, abnormalities of calcium, phosphate, PTH, or vitamin D metabolism, abnormalities in bone turnover, mineralization, volume, linear growth and strength, and vascular and other soft tissue classification. This is the uh, path of genesis of the disorder of uh, mineral metabolism of CKD. The first picture, uh, picture A, showing the traditional view of uh, the mechanism that maintains secondary hyperparathyroidism in the advanced chronic kidney diseases. And the uh, picture B, that is updated view of the mechanism that uh, initiates secondary hyperthyroidism in chronic kidney disease, emphasizing the central role of fibroblast growth factor 23, a calcium sensing receptor, uh, fibroblast growth factor receptor, and uh, parathyroid hormone, among vit and uh, vitamin D receptor. Uh, we know the fibroblast growth factor is playing an important role in CKD and VD. Uh, we, have a, uh, uh, we have done a uh, uh, study in National Institute of Kidney Disease and Urology under Professor Ayubali sir. And uh, it is uh, yet not pub published, but uh, it is uh, going to be published. You know, the, according to the study findings, abnormalities of the fibroblast growth factor 23 was found significant with a uh, serum uh, higher in the CKD patients with, uh, with uh, significantly correlated, positively correlated with uh, calcium, uh, serum phosphate and PTH, whereas negatively correlated with vitamin D, EGFR in CKD patient. And next, uh, this is the uh, counterplay of all uh, mechanism that is the fibroblast growth factor, vitamin D and uh, parathyroid hormone, which maintains the balance between the calcium and phosphate. And uh, this is the uh, main pathogenesis. At the beginning of the CKD stress tree, the ability of the kidney to excrete a phosphate load is diminished and leading to the hyperphosphatemia, elevated PTH, and decreased 125-dihydroxycholicalciferol with associated elevations of fibroblast growth factor. Uh, here we see the uh, uh, Pathogenesis started from the beginning of uh, our uh, CKD stage three. That is uh, uh, when uh, EGFR moderate, uh, mild to moderately decreased. That is uh, 45 to 59, then onwards. And, uh, ulti and ultimately the reduced glomerular filtration rate uh, leads to the phosphate retention and uh, hyperphosphatemia as a result of phosphate retention usually uh, uh, bind uh, uh, usually clinically evident uh, at the stage uh, more prominent at the stage of uh, CKD stage four and five, and reduced renal mass also lead to the reduced activity of one hydroxylase deficiency in renal tubule and thus uh, failure to increase calcitriol uh, production when it is required. When cal uh, circulating calcitriol uh, concentration begins to fall at the stage three and onwards as a uh, direct result of phosphate retention or as a secondary effect of uh, parathormone uh, stimulations. 
then a lower uh, cassitra leads to the uh, reduced calcium absorption uh, from uh, renal tubule and causing a tendency of hypocalcemia, which is counteract by the increased production of uh, parathormone production and secretion. The net effect is the secondary hyper. Uh, thyroidism, that is uh, abnormalities in the ca calcium phosphate PTH, and uh, ultimately uh, as, a, as an appropriate response to hypocalcemia and further aggravate uh, hyperphosphatemia due to pos positive feedback. What is the uh, consequence of CKD MVD? Ultimate consequence of CKD MVD is the renal osteodystrophy, hyperphosphatemia, and cardiovascular calcification, extraskeletal calcification, endocrine disturb, uh, dis uh, disturbance, neurobehavioral changes, and compromised immune system and altered erythropoiesis. If uh, it is left uh, uncorrected, the secondary hypertension, secondary hyperparathyroidism, uh, in, uh, which causes increased mobilization of calcium from the bone, which uh, with the bone weakening and tendency to uh, fracture, and the risk of the fracture is increased in the people who have had a exposure to the uh, dialysis. And ultimately, uh, skeletal abnormality is seen in the renal osteodystrophy, that is uh, osteitis fibrosa, which is a uh, high turnover state, that is osteitis fib uh, fibrosa, and uh, low turnover state, that is osteomalacia, and adynamic bone disease, and os uh, also the osteopenia, osteoporosis, and mixed uh, renal osteodystrophy and others like uh, chronic uh, acidosis, beta-2 microglobulin amyloidosis. The, this is the whole pathophysiology of uh, um, CKD MVD uh, th that is uh, due to high turnover state and low turnover state. This high turnover state, we know that uh, a GFR, when the GFR decreases and renal mass uh, when it decreases, the free calcium ultimately decreases and uh, phosphate retention occurs, which causes the decrease in uh, calcitriol, increase in fibroblast growth factor 23, and PTH gene expression, which causes ultimately increases the uh, parathyroid hormone level that uh, due to lack of uh, negative feedback from the calcium sensing receptor that is causes the tertiary hyperthyroidism. Ultimately, uh, bone turnover and bone resorptions is increased. And uh, on the other hand, the low turnover due to the PTH uh, over suppression due to the calcium based phosphate binders, vitamin D in CKD, and also the osteomalacia, and uh, which causes the decreased uh, bone turnover and uh, the, the ultimately osteomalacia and a dynamic bone disease causes uh, um, ultimate effects uh, that is bone pain factor in increased cardiovascular mortality. Now the vascular calcification uh, in CKD MVD, uh, there is a greater portions of calcification in the arterial media which causes the uh, vascular stiffness and hypertension. And calciphylaxis is a common condition when small cutaneous blood vessels become calcified and leading to uh, acute painful necrosis and ulceration of skin. It is strongly associated with the presence of CKD MBD. Here is the picture showing the painful necrosis with ulceration of skin. And uh, next. Then secondary hyperparathyroidism in the patient with chronic kidney disease is a progressive disorder associated with increased uh, parathyroid hormone uh, level and then disarrangement in calcium and phosphate metabolism and increased PTH stimulation it stimulates osteoclastic activity, which uh, resulting in cortical bone resorptions and marrow fibrosis. This is the uh, pathophysiology of secondary hyperparathyroidism. As we know that when uh, EGFR decreases, then causes increased uh, reten retention of phosphate. Phosphaturia is diminished, and 125-dihydroxycholicosephorol also uh, uh, decreased due to the uh, reduced renal mass. Ultimately, calcium uh, decreases. It causes the secondary uh, hyperparathyroidism, which causes bone resorptions, as I uh, mentioned earlier. 
Then uh, what is the tertiary hyperparathyroidism? When uh, parathyroid gland uh, undergo hypertrophy and become unresponsiveness to the medullary, uh, modulatory, uh, modulatory influence in late CKD, the PTH production may become autonomous, which is called tertiary hyperparathyroidism with the accentuation of the bone destructions and vascular calcification. Uh, this is uh, the what next. Uh, I come to the diagnosis of CKD MVD, and CKD. At first, we have to um, uh, go through the biochemistry. That is uh, serum calcium, phosphorus, alkaline phosphatase, and bone biopsy and radiological X-ray. According to the uh, KDGO, uh, we have to see calcium and phosphate level and uh, in, uh, CKD trace tree. It is frequently uh, within six to 12 months and uh, in CKD stage four, three to six months and CKD stage five within one to three months. Uh, and it should be kept in normal and uh, it PTH in CKD stage three, not required and uh, to uh, assay. And but PTH should be uh, measured uh, in CKD stage four, six to 12 month interval, and CKD in CKD stage five in three to six month interval. Uh, we should get uh, the PTH level within uh, three to nine times more from the normal assay. And alkaline phosphatase should be uh, assayed annually. Uh, or more frequently in the presence of elevated PTH, it should be kept normal, it is our target. And um, we should go, you can go for uh, bone biopsy and radiological x-ray. The uh, uh, If we go through the x-ray, then uh, uh, we show, uh, if we, we go through the x-ray, then uh, extra skeletal uh, classification uh, shows in uh, arterial classification, which is uh, showing in the uh, picture, and pulmonary classification uh, and um, and periarticular uh, classification. This is the extra skeletal uh, meta uh, deposition of uh, calcium. And uh, this is the uh, sub This is the picture of subperiosteal erosion in hyperparathyroidism. And severe subperiosteal erosion as manifested by hyperparathyroidism. The extensive scuffle uh, appearance in the middle phalanx of the left uh, uh, hand represent a small uh, brown tumor. And uh, there is another picture, the Roger Jersey spine in hyperparathyroidism. Vertical Bar body shows the increased density of a ground plate and central radiolucency, which gives the strip appearance of Roger Jersey, like a Jersey. Next, uh, the, what is the uh, laboratory target level? The laboratory target level for calcium and phosphate for uh, stage three and four, uh, the phosphorus should be maintained. 2.7 milligram per DL to 4.6 milligram DL. And uh, uh, the serum level of corrected total calcium should be maintained within the normal range. And the serum calcium, uh, serum calcium phosphorus product should be maintained uh, less than uh, 55 milligram uh, square per uh, DL square. And those in stage five and stage five D, uh, which is uh, uh, who is in maintenance hemodialysis, the level of the phosphate should be maintained 3.5 to 5.5 milligram per DL. And the uh, total uh, calcium should be uh, 8.4 to 9.5 milligram per DL. And serum and calcium phosphate product uh, should be maintained uh, less than 55 milligram uh, square. per ml and in stage four it is 70 to 110 picogram per ml and it stays uh, 5 to 5 d ckd it is about uh, 150 to 300 picogram per ml the kdgo guideline uh, recommended the parathyroid hormone level uh, kept to just below the 150 the risk of a dynamic bone disease and uh, we know the lower the pth greater the survival 
and uh, serum uh, alkaline phosphatase level in CKD in usually uh, more than 120 uh, associated the poor survival in hemodialysis patient, whereas the alkaline phosphatase should be traditionally measured for the measurement or management of the bone disease. In recent year, it uh, have to face, uh, it is, uh, it, have to face uh, favor out the favor because of KDK guideline uh, didn't include it a recommendation, nor did they suggest any cut off level or target range. Alkaline phosphatase can uh, can be effectively lowered by the measure of uh, active vitamin D and also. Uh, calcium mimetics and lower uh, serum alkaline phosphate is the better in the response of dialysis patient to ESA therapy during anemia management. This is the uh, state care uh, approach to the prevention and treatment of the secondary hyperparathyroidism in the CKD. Uh, we should monitor PTH, vitamin D status, uh, and treat uh, as necessary, treat acidosis, consider the uh, dietary uh, phosphate re restriction, calcium supplement, and uh, phosphate binders. In CKD, I have mentioned earlier that PTH should be uh, 35 to CKD stage 3, 35 to 75 picogram per ml. Calcium should be 8.4 uh, to 10.2 milligram per dl. Phosphorus should be 2.7 to 4.6. And uh, in this stage, just consider phosphate uh, restriction in CKD stage 3 and calcium supplement or uh, uh, phosphate binders. And stage four, uh, the, our goal is to maintain PTH in 70 to 110 picogram per ml. Calcium should be maintained 8.4 to 10 10.2 milligram DL and phosphorus uh, sh should be maintained 2.7 to 4.6 milligram per DL. So consider uh, active vitamin D sterol, cal uh, calcitriol, doxa cal calciferol, and pericalcitol. And other uh, in the CKD stage five, so uh, to maintain uh, intake PTS level 150 to 300 picogram per ml, calcium 8.4 to 9.5 uh, milligram per DL, phosphorus 3.5 to 5.5 milligram per DL. Dialysate calcium, dialysis re regimen, limit calcium intake, and even needed uh, then uh, parathyroidectomy. Uh, this is the summary of the options of the treatment of the CKD MVD. We know that uh, dietary uh, uh, phosphate uh, uh, restriction, and uh, all, uh, we have the um, commonly uh, we use phosphate binders that is calcium carbonate, calcium acetate. Uh, these uh, products are um, calcium containing, so there is a uh, increased risk of vascular calcification. And aluminum hydroxide preparation also have, kin, but aluminum containing preparation may increase the risk of a dynamic bone disease. Uh, we have another uh, sevilimar preparation and uh, lanthanum. Uh, sevilimar and lanthanum are uh, expensive, and uh, we have uh, vitamin D analogs, that is alpha calcidol and uh, para calcidol. And uh, these uh, this products uh, may uh, direct uh, suppression of PTH, may cause hypercalcemia and contribute to the phosphate retention and direct suppression of PTH. The sinacalcate, which may uh, hyperphosphatemia. Recommendation uh, use uh, restricted to a CKD stage 5. It should be used in conjunction of vitamin D analogs. This is the actions of the, we know that uh, we can uh, use calcium based binders which uh, may increase the calcium level and decreases the phosphate, uh, calcium phosphate and PTH. Calcium free binders are, uh, may, uh, uh, calcium increase may minimize or uh, some uh, mildly increase, but phosphorus, calcium into phosphate and PTH uh, usually decrease. Vitamin D analogs increases calcium phosphate, phosphate and calcium and phosphate level and uh, PTH decreases markedly and calcium mimetic uh, product uh, decreases the calcium um, phosphate, calcium into phosphate and uh, PTH. 
the uh, dietary uh, restriction for phosphate it is very difficult to achieve uh, to, to limit the uh, protein intake it uh, it um, uh, it may contribute to the malnutrition without resulting in decrease in progressions of renal dysfunctions among the patient with uh, pta uh, pth and serum phosphate level target uh, when uh, there is a increase uh, uh, to achieve the target, it is suggested to restrict dietary phosphate intake, uh, 900 milligram per day. And uh, we can use other uh, phosphate binders. And uh, however, in, the, in hyperparathyroidism and hyperphosphatemia, unlikely to prevent it only dietary phosphate restriction. So we need uh, so to buy addition of some phosphate binders, calcium or non-calcium based. And the uh, phosphate binders, the, ultimately the administration of azine to bind phosphate uh, in blood, in GIT, which, uh, which uh, prevent the absorptions. Um, uh, this uh, calcium uh, containing uh, binders are inexpensive and well tolerated, but it may contribute to the vascular calcification. Non-calcium binding uh, containing phosphate binders, that is uh, sebilimer and lanthanum, has the advantage to reduce calcium intake and showing less uh, chance of uh, vascular calcification. This is the uh, uh, common phosphate binder. So we use calcium acetate, calcium carbonate, and, and uh, aluminum hydroxide, not used uh, uh, nowadays and uh, others in sebilimar hydrochloride and sebilimar carbonate and lanthanum carbonate. And uh, we know that uh, this is the uh, uh, sebilimar hydrochloride may uh, causes the, the um, potentially uh, decreases the bicarbonate level causes acidosis, but uh, semilimar uh, carbonate minimize that problem. And lanthanum car carbonate is the, uh, the cost effective and it is the uh, potential accumulation of lanthanum due to the GI absorption, although long-term clinical consequence, which is unknown, and GIT uh, side effects are more in case of lanthanum carbonate. And the, uh, Sebilimar calcium free aluminum aluminum free phosphate binders. Sebilimar is uh, uh, first approved by US FDA in 1998. Sebilimar is completely resistant to the digestive degradation and therefore it is not absorbed from the GAT. And Sebilimar carbonate tablets are as a phosphate binders indicate uh, for to control the serum phosphate of uh, phosphate level in adults with chronic kidney disease, uh, patient with dialysis. This uh, I have already mentioned the uh, action of uh, sebilimar. Uh, sebilimar decreases the uh, phosphate level, uh, which causes decrease in the parathermal level and fibroblast growth factor level and clotho level. And uh, it, it has the play, uh, Pleiotropic uh, effects, that is, uh, it reduces LDL, uric acid, angiotensin converting enzymes, and endotoxins and crassols. It increases the futin A. It, um, as the phosphate decreases, it reduces the inflammation and oxidative stress, reduces the vascular calcification, improves anemia, and um, you know, ultimately it uh, reduces the cardiac, cardiovascular mort morbidity and mortality. So uh, sebilimar uh, hydrochloride uh, versus sebilimar carbonate, I, as I mentioned that uh, it, uh, sebilimar hydrochloride causes metabolic acidosis, but uh, sebilimar carbonate uh, minimized that problems. And uh, it is uh, quietly uh, um, uh, indicated uh, to control in the um, uh, phosphorus in adult with chronic kidney disease on uh, dialysis. And sebilimar uh, dose should be 800 milligram. Eat phosph eat phosphate phosphorus level as more than 5.5, less than 7.5 within this range. And uh, we should give one uh, 1600 milligram if it is more than 7.5 milligram per DL. It should be administered orally three times uh, per day uh, with meals. Titered uh, 800 milligram per mil in two weeks uh, interval for adult population as needed to obtain serum phosphate uh, level. For uh, adult uh, patients swinging from the serum uh, hydrochloride tablet to 
uh, semilimar carbonate tablet or powder uh, use the same dose. And uh, I, semilimar preparation ultimately reduce soft tissue calcification and renal damage. And uh, so it is uh, attenuate the progression of uh, coronary and aortic calcification in hemodialysis patient only uh, also. It also reduces the semilimar preparation, reduces the LDL and uh, increases HDL and cholesterol level. And semilimar is commonly initiated, uh, uh, initially used over lanthanum. Um, it is effective lower, uh, for lowering uh, phosphate. And um, long-term data for lanthanum is more uh, limited. And um, we know the uh, calcinomimetic agent that is a uh, uh, calcinomimetic agents are the calcium sensor uh, uh, sensing receptor is a G protein, which is an essential molecule for regulation of extracellular calcium, binding to the uh, calcium that is, uh, uh, here is a picture, sinacalcate that uh, bind with the calcium sensing receptor, which uh, influxes the calcium within the uh, parathyroid uh, uh, glands and uh, which ultimately uh, reduces the, the parathyroid hormone secretion. So um, uh, ultimately uh, decreases the serum calcium level. Sinacalcet is usually indicated uh, for the treatment of secondary hyperparathyroidism in the patient with chronic kidney disease uh, uh, with the stage five on dialysis. It should be, what is the doses of sinacalcet? Sinacalcet should be uh, started uh, 30 milligram once daily with food and shortly after meal. And uh, it can be uh, just calcium and phosphate should be measured within one week after administration of uh, sinacalcet and should be measured uh, one to four weeks after initia initiation of uh, or dose adjustment. Sinacalcet should be titered more, uh, no more frequently than uh, two to four weeks. Uh, sequential doses of 60, 90, 120, 180 milligram once daily to the target uh, uh, in the um, intact PTH level uh, according to the um, National Kidney Foundation or uh, KDUT recommendation for the CK, CKD patient on uh, maintenance hemodialysis less than 150. And PTH should be uh, assayed uh, no earlier than uh, 12 hours after dosing with sinacalcet. And uh, uh, there should be uh, adjuvant uh, with sinacalcet, vitamin D analog should be used as an ad adjuvant therapy, especially in CKD stage five. And what is the uh, other uh, vitamin D analogs? That is, uh, we know that vitamin D includes both vitamin D, argo uh, calciferol, and vitamin, uh, that is vitamin D2, and vitamin D3, polycalciferol, and other, uh, that is vitamin D uh, derivatives include the naturally occurring vitamin D metabolites, that is 125-dihydroxy polycalciferol, and synthetic vitamin D analogs. Uh, we know that uh, doxa, uh, doxa calciferol, Calcitrol, pericalcitrol, alpha calcidol, uh, fel calcitrol, and 22 oxa calcitrol. This is the uh, uh, picture showing the um, sinacalcet with associated with the reductions of uh, PTH level. And uh, according to the, the dose titration and uh, efficacy assessment within uh, weekly, uh, uh, it is showed that within, uh, 20, within 26 weeks, it, uh, it uh, able to maintain the parathyroid hormone level. And then uh, other options that is I have al uh, already mentioned that uh, indication for the parathyroidectomy that when it is indicated severe hyperparathyroidism with uh, persistent hyperphosphatemia and responsiveness to the calcitriol and calcium with hypercalcemia with intolerance or unresponsiveness to the calcium mimetic product and in the renal transplantation candidate with evidence of metastatic calcification, calciphylaxis with evidence of hyperparathyroidism, severe pruritus only if additional uh, evidence of hyperparathyroidism. And this is the, uh, la the last uh, 
slide for uh, treatment of a dynamic bone disease that uh, it should the treatment of the a dynamic bone disease should be uh, decreasing the doses of calcium based phosphate binders and using non calcium based phosphate binders decreasing or stopping the active calcium d analogs for the patient on dialysis uh, possibly by using um, low dialysate uh, calcium concentrations uh, this is thank you for being uh, a work. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Professor Barul Alam, for the excellent lecture, which covering the all aspect of the renal bone disease. Now, I could not see the Professor Nurul Huda, who is another chairperson. If he is not there, then I will request Professor Dr. Imtiaz to finish is uh, lectured in 10 minutes time so that we can invite the panelists, Professor Ivoli Choudhury and Professor Shanur, and then we invite a few questions and answer session. Dr. Imtiaz Rahman, please. Thank you very much, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to all of you to this live webinar program. I'd like to express my heartfelt gratitude to all of you on behalf of Namana Pharmaceuticals and Jewelism Company. Special thanks to Dr. Babur Alam for his nice presentation and elaborating. He managed uh, lots of phenomena in security. Thank you, sir. And Dr. Imtia shared about role of ferric sited in chronic kidney disease management. Ferric sited is an excellent invention for the patients of CKD that allows simultaneous treatment uh, in a hyperphosphatemia and iron deficiency anemia. We know that disorder of mineral and bone metabolism in chronic kidney disease are associated with increased risk for cardiovascular calcification and osteoporosis. Anemia has been associated with progressive loss of kidney function and increased mortality. Ferric sided always be different, design always be different from others. Ferric sided is the only oral iron tablet and phosphate binder which is approved by FDA in dialysis and non-dialysis cases for the treatment of iron deficiency anemia and hyperphosphatemia, especially in adult patients with chronic kidney disease. Can you continue? There is some problem with the presentation. Sir, yes, is some technical problem here? Yeah, technical problem is there. Sometimes I am in the screen, sometimes, sometimes somebody is not in the screen. <laughs> yes, I can see Professor Nuruluda. Welcome to join this seminar. Let's see uh, mechanism of action of ferric sided. Uh, ferric sided binds to the dietary phosphate in the GI tract and precipitates as insoluble ferric phosphate and excreted through the stool, ultimately lowers the phosphate concentration in the serum, ultimately manage the phosphate level very effective way. And another is unbound ferric sided uh, in presence of ferric reductase in in, enzyme in the GI tract and ferrous formed and ferrous formed transported through the enterocytes into the blood and binds to plasma protein transferrin incorporated into the hemoglobin and controls anemia. This is the beauty of phosphon actually manage phosphate level as well as anemia. And another thing is cited is absorbed and uh, metabolic acidosis is common phenomena in chronic kidney disease and absorbed cited uh, which is comes from uh, bicarbonate and bicarbonate correctly uh, manage uh, metabolic acidosis very effective way. Let's see the doses of phosphor, hyperphosphatemia in chronic kidney disease on dialysis. Starting dose is two tablets orally, three times per day with meals. Uh, in, uh, about in 12 tablets, we have to use the level of the level of the clinical trial. We have to use the phosphate level of the level of the phosphate level of the 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 level of the
And another indication, iron deficiency anemia in chronic kidney disease, not on dialysis. Starting dose is one tablet orally, three times per day with meals. Ekhano amra short bocchu ek din about three tablet use korte pari. Yevong clinical trial dekhe chhe ebara jodi amra pasi tablet use korte pari, taal amra serum hemoglobin level ta ke amader standard level ni jete pari. Let's see some clinical study. Phase three controls phosphorus and uh, delivers iron in patients on dialysis. Study type is active control and uh, number of patients was 292. Duration was 56 weeks. Drug used pericetate and pericetate reduce serum phosphate level as well as increase serum hemoglobin and serum ferritin level very effective way. Another study pericetate reduce intravenous iron and erythropoiesis stimulating as an use in ESRD. We know that in ESRD cases, uh, increased demand IV iron and erythropoietin. In study phase three randomized trial, so number of patients was 441 in ESRD cases. Duration is 52 weeks. Drug use pericetate in active control. In active control used in calcium acetate and sevlimid. In pericetate, those patients are used in pericetate. They have 85% cases, no IV iron required. So uh, pericetate ensures less elemental IV iron requirement, very effective way. Another study in nephrology dialysis transplantation, very round article. And this study is conducted in Japan. A randomized trial, ferricited versus sevlimid hydrochloride in patients on hemodialysis. Sevlimid has no control in iron deficiency anemia. It has no result to increase level of serum hemoglobin level and serum ferritin level. And uh, sevlimid only FDA approved in on dialysis cases, whereas ferricited uh, reduce serum phosphate level as well as increase serum ferritin and serum hemoglobin cases both dialysis and non-dialysis cases, very effective way. Another study, effects of ferric acid on parathyroid hormone in non-dialysis CKD patients. Study type is randomized double blind study. Number of patients was 117. Duration is 16 weeks and drug used ferric acid. And ferric acid reduced uh, parathyroid hormone very effective way, effectively reduce parathyroid hormone. We know that patients with renal hyperparathyroid hormone experience increased rates of cardiovascular problems and bone disease. Treatment with ferric acid as a phosphate binder results significantly decrease of parathyroid hormone after 16 weeks. Uh, last study, uh, ferric acid effects on ferric acid on fibroblast growth factor 23 in non-dialysis chronic kidney disease patient. Study type is randomized trial, uh, number of patients was 117, duration is 16 weeks and ferric acid. Uh, ferric acid effectively reduce both C fibroblast growth factor 23 and I fibroblast growth factor 23. Elevated serum concentration of fibroblast growth factor have been associated with incidence and progression of chronic kidney disease. That can be happen left ventricular hypertrophy and cardiovascular events and cardiovascular calcification also that cause mortality in patients with chronic kidney disease. And treatment with ferric acid as phosphate binder results significant decrease of fibroblast growth factor after 16 weeks. Uh, I want to summarize my presentation. This is the Foscone. The Foscone brand is comes from phosphate control, a novel iron delivering phosphate binder, which ensures dual benefits and successfully reduce phosphate level as well as improves iron deficiency anemia symptom in CKD. And phosphone ensures less elemental IV iron requirement. And phosphone ensures better serum ferritin, hemoglobin, and phosphate level compared to sevilimid. And phosphone is decreased fibrous growth factor 23 very effective way. Phosphone is only 25 padaka. This is combined uh, combination drug to manage the uh, iron deficiency anemia as well as hyperphosphatemia. So this is a very good choice of drug for managed chronic kidney disease. I'd like to thank all the panel members, chairperson, keynote speaker and moderator. Thank you very much for giving this opportunity. I'd like to thank our honorable uh, prescriber, Lanet audience, Raj TV, and my beloved colleagues of Navana Pharmaceuticals. Thank you very much. I'd like to uh, request to consider Foscon in iron deficiency anemia. This is because a new dimension treatment option for chronic kidney disease patient, because it's can cardiovascular calcification not happen, fibroblast growth factor not happen. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Imtiaz. I now request Professor Ayuali Choudhury to speak something about the progress of CKD and MBD as a panelist. Professor Ayuali Choudhury is there. Yes, sir. sir because, thank of you, sir. because of restricted time, please make it five sir, minutes. We will we'll be, we'll be brief, very much brief. So thank you, sir. Uh, I, I, I must express my 
salam uh, to my teacher, Professor Harun Rashid sir. And also I have my director, uh, Professor Nurul Huda Lenin, uh, the co-chairman of the session and all the uh, viewers of the Raj TV and my dear colleagues. I should congratulate Dr. Babul to cover this uh, big subject in a very short span of time. He has in fact covered everything. And uh, just I, to go very quickly, I would make a few comments. Number one, that this uh, CKD mineral bone disease, it is a systemic disorder that has been amply uh, emphasized by Dr. Babrul. And it results from chronic, in a chronic kidney disease patient, there is not only laboratory abnormality, there is not only bone uh, disorders, but there is uh, a very important the fact that there is extra skeletal calcification, the calcification of the, of the soft tissue, calcification of the vessels. And actually this extra skeletal calcification uh, lead to uh, the cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. We know that our patients, they die of kidney failure to some extent, but the major cause of the death of our patient is cardiovascular events. And these cardiovascular events actually can result from this vascular calcification. And as a doctor, as a, as a renal physician, we have some responsibility to try to reduce this burden of calcification um, in our CKD patients who are advanced stage, who are on dialysis. And we should take, consider uh, of taking care of this fact that by prescribing in a rational way, we can help our patients. So this is number one. Second point is that uh, about the, uh, in, in, in this uh, CKDMB disorder, we have heard that there is three things. One is there is hyperphosphatemia. Second, there is low calcium, hypocalcemia. Third, there is high phosphate. So how we should approach? We, number one goal is to decrease the serum phosphate. We have to approach to some dietetic consultation. We should spend some time on our patient for this counseling. Even we can refer them to the dietitian. And we know that the phosphate is present in virtually all food. And you see, the more the food is tasty, the more phosphate is there. And you cannot separate protein from the phosphate. You cannot separate phosphate from the, uh, from the commonly eaten, the um, big bakery items, the food stuffs, everything we, we are taking. But how we can say, we can tell our patients, don't, you must avoid, you must avoid the fast food. You must avoid the processed food. You must avoid the cola, which is, a, which is number one enemy of the mankind. I, I must say, this Coca-Cola, this fast food must be avoided by the, by the by kidney patients. And because these, they are highly bioavailable and they increase the phosphate to very great extent. Among the protein, we can say our patient that among the protein, of, because all the protein have got high phosphate content, but the egg, in the egg, the phosphate ratio with the protein is much less. And you see egg protein is a good source of protein and it is a me medium source of phosphate. So about this phosphate one, so we have to give some dietary advice. Second, we should advise them to go for the phosphate binders. And we see our patients are poor and we are very much inclined to give them calcium containing phosphate binders. And these are okay till the patient has got CKDC four or five. But when the patient goes into CKDC five, if we allow them to take this continuously, continuously without monitoring, that can lead to dangerous hypercalcemia and calcium phosphate product can be so much that there may be uh, accelerated vascular calcification. So we should be take care of this point. And thirdly, in among the patients of dialysis, we should ensure that the patient should have thorough time of full dialysis, because a good dialysis would reduce the phosphate and longer dialysis would reduce the serum phosphate uh, definitely. So about this uh, phosphate, this one, I, I won't go very much in detail, 
and uh, lastly I, i would have a few points uh, regarding the use of the newer drug that is the ferric citrate uh, which has been discussed by the uh, dr imtiaz that uh, ferric citrate is an oral uh, insoluble uh, this is calcium free uh, aluminum free phosphate binder it has been used uh, in in the many approved by, by fda for the use in dialysis patient but in some uh, in japan they have used in both in pre dialysis as well as in dialysis patient but you see this is very much effective no doubt number two that it is it significantly there is absorption of the iron as a result there is less need of give, to give iv iron or even with there may be less need of erythropoietin stimulating agents uh but uh i i have i have i was looking at the prices in the in the way, in the in the uh, in the literature that they have shown it is really expensive i would like to know from dr imtiaz that how how my how what it was the price of two tablets three times daily 25 taka 25 taka or that one tablet only 25 taka oh that is really cheap <laughs> i was that is very really cost cost effective cost effective <laughs> cost okay. effective Okay, okay, and the, you see, that's the the thing. The, I would like, uh, I would like to, sir. Uh, thank you very much. I would like to stop over here. Thank you, Professor Ayubul Choudhury. I will now request Professor Shahnu. He is present here. Yes. Pro- yes, Professor Shahnu can speak in another five minutes to improve about the renal bone disease and their management. Uh, we have uh, one question from our uh, audience. Uh, can I? Uh, Professor Shaharur uh, is not there. He is an Chan- another uh, pan- another Chan- panelist. Chan- yeah. yes. So he yes, should. Yes, uh, yeah. Thank you, sir, uh, for giving me the opportunity. Uh, I am very much uh, grateful to uh, the. Uh, I must have. Uh, uh congratulate uh, dr babul alam uh for his excellent presentation as well as dr intezu rahman uh for his talk on new uh, phosphate binder ferric citrate uh we are going to ask our director professor nurul huda though he is a urologist but he is very much updated on nephrology in different aspects of nephrology uh uh brief the for me uh one thing i should mention that management of uh the the specific complications management and the metabolic acidosis management uh all are very much essential but they are uh, the, the management uh, is also expensive Uh, uh also because you know for the uh, uh, in case of a uh, prescribed tetrapoietin uh, which is an ex- uh, expensive drug uh, uh sometimes ckd mbd that is the uh ckd mineral bone disorder uh, we have three components already the professor uh, dr babul alam has nicely described that is the biochemical abnormality skeletal abnormality as well as vascular calcifications and the management of this uh, special entity uh, it requires uh, first with phosphate binder sometimes becoming d analogs uh, these all the phosphate binders uh, except the calcium containing phosphate binders are expensive like sevalimar hydrochloride and uh, uh, and uh, lanthanum carbonate these are very much expensive for our poor patients and uh, but the new molecule that is coming that is the ferric citrate and another molecule uh, is come, uh, i think uh, will be available very soon that is the uh, it is available in us and approved by FD, uh, fda that is the sucroferric oxyhydroxide it is also a um, iron delivering phosphate binder it is available in uh, us and uh, FD, uh, approved by fda it is also very much expensive so uh we should uh um consider these drugs with uh, uh, with with caution and rationally very much rationally because our patients are poor 
are, and uh, it's, these drugs should be subsidized from the government. Otherwise, our patient cannot buy uh, from their own pocket. Another thing is that we should not prescribe the uh, calcium containing phosphate binders right and left uh, years together because these these drugs has uh, definite uh, some adverse effects. Professor Ivalisa has mentioned that is the vascular calcification and hypercalcemia and vascular calcification, and which uh, uh, pose a burden to our uh, cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. And another thing is that uh, 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 we should consider we should consider the uh, biochemical abnormalities in CKDM3, that is the derangement in calcium, phosphate, and PTH as a whole, not separately. Uh, only we should, we, we should not only see the calcium level, we should not only see the phosphate level, or neither the uh, parathyroid hormone. We should consider all the things because there is a uh, there is a pro, um, complex interplay between these components. So we should uh, investigate or we should do the uh, test and that is minimum only uh, minimum should be a calcium calcium level, phosphate level, and PTH. And if it is possible, vitamin D level before prescribing any uh, phosphate binder or vitamin D analogs. Uh, but the investigation is also expensive. Uh, the uh, PTH level, it requires 5,000 taka, uh, and vitamin uh, D uh, level, it also requires four to 5,000 taka. So uh, I must, it's my uh, ask to the government to uh, um, subsidize prices of these in, in investigations so that our poor patients can do. And uh, uh, regarding the um, uh, new molecule of pedic citrate, uh, I think it is uh, very much promising, and it is available in uh, our neighboring countries long before. Long before. And uh, thanks to Navana Pharmaceuticals for introducing these molecules in our country, I think uh, it will uh, help our poor patients uh, to uh, to uh, get this drug at a cheaper price. Uh, and uh, uh, again, I think our our uh, our teacher. Our uh, Professor Hanushit sir, our Honorable Director Professor Nuruddha sir, and uh, my mentor Professor Ayubali Choudhury, my colleague Dr. Babu Lalam, and the viewers of Ras TV uh, for watching this webinar. Thank you, Adi. Thank you, Professor Shahadur. We have a very limited time, so uh, we should now. In there is a question and answer session, but. Because of the limited time, we can allow three or four questions, important questions. So let us start the question and answer session. One of our students, AMD student, uh, he is uh, showing a question to us here. Can we use very separate in uh, hypophosphatic hypophosphatemia in dilated patient with high ferritin level? I think Dr. Imtiaz can answer this question. So, fake said it only indicated for hyperphosphatemia. Uh, it, uh, it Anybody, it, there is a condition like high ferritin level. Is there no, uh, no, can... no. Uh, uh, no, because uh, it, it will uh, again cause uh, um, uh, increased iron load. Uh, this can be uh, and... hematomatosis, may be happened in contra indicated for those are patients suffering from hematomatosis. Should be avoided. Uh, should be avoided. It's still uh, very clear to that it is uh, indicated for iron deficiency anemia and hyperphosphatemia in dialysis and non-dialysis uh, cases. Uh, also in the if chronic if inflammatory if conditions. If syrup yeah. is more than one thousand, one thousand should yeah. not be used. One of my question to Dr. MTS is: Iron oral iron is absorbed in patient with chronic kidney disease and dialysis patient. Does oral iron absorbed in dialysis patient? Oral, oral iron sir, is absorbed in dialysis patient, but it cannot a uh, very effective way. But ferric yeah. cited is, is a phosphate binder that as well as uh, controls iron deficiency anemia as well as controls hyperphosphate in both cases. But iron deficiency anemia in uh, she had take both drug in uh, phosphate binder also uh, iron preparation also. So, so, so what is the usefulness of this ferric citrate then? 
if we use further iron as well no 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 not at all uh, only ferric acid used in cases for uh, the, there are no calcium acetate no other iron hematinic used when we used in ferric acid okay sorry uh, the one thing is that the ferric uh, part and the citrate part the ferric part combines with the phosphate it becomes an insoluble one but if some iron has to be absorbed it has to be converted to ferrous form ferrous form and only then exactly. it becomes absorbed yes is it converted to ferrous form yeah yeah obviously yeah, because yeah, you know that all the phosphate binders all the phosphate binders uh, usually don't absorb within the guard ferric acid comment about this ferric acid unbound ferric ferric acid it binds to the ferric reductase enzyme and it from the ferrous form and ferrous form transported through the enterocytes in the blood and increase the plasma transferrin and make it hemoglobin and ultimately it correction uh, is very effective way a question in the patient with uh, ckd especially on maintenance hemodialysis where is uh, is there is any uh, gi uh, uh, less absorption occurs usually in ckd patients exactly. and especially on the hemodialysis and uh, ultimate net effect of the uh, iron absorption will be will be less uh, 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 sir wants to mention that points Okay. Yeah, this is a valid, valid uh, question to Dr. Abdul. He has explained because oral iron is useless in hemodialysis patient. It should always be intravenous iron. I don't know. That's the question uh, of our sir to Dr. Imtiaz. Is there is any Sorry? benefit for him? Is there is any benefit for uh, dialysis patient giving very citrate yeah to improve uh, we already mentioned in ja uh, japan study this is the nephrology dialysis transplantation study in uh, 230 hemolysis patient er pore study kora hoyechilo jekhane dekha geche je ferric acid khub effective way te serum hemoglobin level ke ebong serum ferritin level ke barate parche sudhara amra eta bolte pare je ferric acid uh, hemodialysis patient er jonno khub effective ekta preparation amader desher expect e jeta problem holo amader patient ra amni dialysis korte pare na dui tai koshto kore kono rokom dialysis kore je sadharonoto western country te ba japan e onnanno jaygay dialysis adequate dialysis hoy amader desher patient ra amni adequate dialysis dite pare na shei khetre apnar ei ferric citrate dile shetate koto tuk benefited hobe dialysis patient er khetre The, the, we can we can have a study in our institute if uh, Dr. Imtiaz and the, from the Nabana can supply uh, uh, for a study, and we can use them in about 100 patients. And I think uh, uh, one of our MD students can have a proposal in this regard, so that uh, we can see this uh, benefit in our patients. Okay, so Sanu can can take the. David, uh, you should start prescription to first one. We can uh, study definitely, sir. Actually, स्टाडी कमान <laughs> तो 
শুনতে পাচ্ছি না স্যার শুনতে পাচ্ছি না যদি আমরা আমি আসলে কোশ্চেনটা বুঝতে পারিনি শুনতে পারিনি থাকলে <laughs> 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 চেয়ারপার I think he, he was disconnected. আসছে <laughs> আমি তো মাঝখানে হ্যাঁ <laughs> Okay. Uh, I have learned many things from the presenter uh, about the chronic kidney disease and bone mineral disease management. Uh, I think uh, it appears from the presentation that the corona, the COVID-19 virus has created a havoc throughout the whole world. And chronic kidney disease like more, it creates more havoc in the body than that of the corona that has the situation that is prevailing in, in the world. And during this situation, uh, I think a chronic kidney disease patient is not a single patient. It has got five to at least five to ten dimensions affecting the body system uh, of, of the patient. And my colleagues 
in the national institute of kidney disease and neurology uh, professor dr shalo network ta bodhay disturb korche network ta problem Yes. Sir, you can continue, sir. Yes, sir. You can continue, sir. This is an excellent CME. And the speaker, Professor Babrul Alam, who has elaborated MBD in security patient very nicely, elaborately. And it will be very useful to those who attended this meeting. I also like to thank Professor Ayub Ali and Professor Shahanu Alam to give the new light on CKD and MBD. And there is an excellent opportunity as shown by the Dr. Imtiaz, although very costly, but definitely a new drug, which is proposed to be given to the CKD patient. And I like to thank Professor Ayub Ali that they like to see how effective would be this ferric citrate in CKD patient. And it is better to make a protocol for MD thesis so that they can study elaborately and its effectiveness can be known to all of us. Lastly, I thank the Navana Pharmaceutical and RAS TV, who has come forward and doing this CME, we should continue our education in this very bad time in COVID-19 years. MD Nephrology should continue their CME program in this way so that many more nephrologists and the doctors who are in trainee nephrologists can be benefited with all the speakers. And the most of the speakers who has elaborated their subjects very nicely. And then again, thank Professor Babrul Alam for his extensive review of the MBD subjects. And this would be very useful, those who have heard of this lecture. And thank you very much. And we we'll look forward for another CME of this virtual type of meeting to spread more and more knowledge and education in these circumstances. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Then I, I finish this, okay? Uh, host. <laughs> so you should end here. I thank all of you, especially our legendary professor Harun Swar and our beloved professor and our teacher, mentor in every way, uh, Professor Ayabali sir, uh, our uh, senior colleague and, uh, our, and also our director sir. Uh, after all this uh, uh, her time, I, he again came back. Uh, again, I uh, also want to thank our media partner and, of course, scientific partner, Navana Pharmaceuticals Limited, and Dr. Intia also for the uh, new uh, drug uh, lectures uh, to uh, give to us. And uh, uh, lastly, 
uh, I give many, many thanks to our uh, one of the most promising nephrologists, Dr. Babdul Alumbhai, for giving so much elaborated uh, this uh, lecture on CKD MBD. Again, we expect to uh, continue this continued medical education. Uh, and with this hope, we, I, 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 I'm taking away from all of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Moriam, for the excellent comment term. And thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Babu, sir, for this nice presentation. Morimapu, thank you very much. Babu, thank you. Thank you. You are watching Raj TV. Jagorone, Bangladesh. Please subscribe our channel.